Welcome to the Henkel Printed Electronics video podcast. Today I'm hosting a discussion about fine line screen printing. My name is Aad van der Spuy. I'm part of the dedicated printed electronics team. I'm working eight years for Henkel and responsible for business development printed electronics in Europe. And now um, we have two experts in the discussion today, Hans van Oosten and Andreas Kunkler, and I'm happy to hand over to Andreas first for a short personal introduction. Thank you, Art. My name is Andreas Künkele and I'm in charge of screen printing and textile printing applications, technology laboratory at Kiesel and Wolf. In the meantime, I have been working in our company for more than 70 years. And accordingly, I'm on the road to customers, sales partners in Germany and worldwide. We are currently working intensively on emulsion systems for the making of screen printing stencils for printed electronics, our fine line product program, emulsions, capillary films, and release additives for the stencil setup. Hans, can you also introduce yourself? Thank you, yes, Andrea. Thank you. Uh, I will uh, introduce myself. My name is Hans van Oosten, and like Art, I'm part of the printed electronic teams uh, from Henkel. Uh, I work for more than 45 years for the company. I'm based in Schiemda in the Netherlands and I'm uh, responsible for customer technical service uh, in Europe. Okay, thank you both for, for a short introduction. And uh, I would like to um, start a discussion um, as I see a lot of demand from the market for uh, finer structures in screen printing. And um, yeah, I want to ask Hans, since he is the expert, our expert on um, on the inks, on the materials. We're talking about silver ink. So, Hans, what what are the main properties and um, key characteristics of the um, of the ink? Um, what can you tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, let's start. Uh, let's start to tell you that uh, we have a wide range of uh, conductive ink, silver inks, for screen printing, for printed electronics. And printed electronics always uh, starts uh, with a conductive material uh, and mainly silver inks. Our st standard silver inks are not suitable for printing lines uh, below 100 microns. And uh, yeah, that's basically because uh, the materials will perform too much flow during the processing. And nobody will care when they print a line of one millimeter wide and they end up with 1.1 millimeters. However, when you want to really print fine line structures and you start with a line width of 100 microns and it, and it flows out and you end up with a line of 200 microns, that's absolutely unacceptable. Therefore, uh, Henkel developed an, uh, a new material. It's, it's now commercialized as the Loctite ECI 1006. Um, it's a material, a silver ink, based on fine particle size silvers, which typically will be have a particle size below 10 microns. Uh, it has a very high viscosity to reduce the flow of the coating to an acceptable level. You always need flow of the material because with screen printing, you will dots and they need to flow together. Uh, but yeah, you should avoid that the lines spread too much. And for that reason, uh, that high viscosity was uh, introduced. Also being able to use very fine screens, uh, we use a very slow drying solvent, which uh, avoid clogging of the material in, in the screen. Typically the process conditions for this material will be uh, a uh, fine screen, typically 160 mesh uh, per centimeter, low printing speed in the range of 5 to 10 centimeters per second and using a hard sharp squeegee. Uh, the material has uh, proven to be suitable for printing line spacings in the range of 50 to 100 microns and the performance of the coating in the end it's compatible with uh, polyester foil but also with indium tin oxide sputtered foils and it will uh, have good adhesion to that materials and a resistance level in the range of uh, 25 milliohms per square at 25 micron coating thickness, which is not the coating thickness you will typically apply, but that's a, a kind of global standard used for 
expressing the conductivity of of, uh, our, of conducting things. Yeah, so if I understand correctly, Hans, what is important for a fine line ink is then uh, you mentioned it that the um, particle size is is important, but also the rheology, so how it flows, and then of course, um, yeah, related to the particles, um, yeah, you also have to use the right screen and the right uh, processing parameters. And I'm happy to have Andreas here to also to comment on the screen when you start to, yeah, print fine line structures. Um, what is what is your experience, Andreas? Uh, what is important there? What kind of screen to use? And what is the Thank typical? You. Yeah. Thank you. Art. Yeah, within uh, from our point of view, within this application, we speak more about the perfect stencil making. In this regard, the first question that arises is, what does fine line mean? First of all, does the printed conductor track require a resolution? line width of 100 microns or should it be less than 50 microns? Uh, the printability of 100 until down to 50 microns and also above is not longer a major challenge in screen printing in these days. For the re required resolution below 50 microns, we provide emulsions especially developed for this task which offer optimal UV light absorption, absorption on appropriate steel mesh. These emulsions can also, of course, be used for a resolution over 50 microns, as they also have an excellent resistance to conductive silver paste, example, your Hengel pastes. For applications with over 50 microns, we also offer so-called capillary films. The layer thickness is uh, on a pre-coded uh, polyester carrier and the thickness is defined. It's available in different thicknesses. Our emulsions or capillary films are only one component of this uh, setup of a perfect stencil making. Yeah, so um, what I've learned from Hans in the yeah in, in previous uh, years, um, Hans was also say, yeah, suggesting to the customer to use capillary films, uh, especially when you, you go to fine line. But uh, now it seems that yeah, the development of, of the emulsions uh, are yeah, more developed over the years. So what is, the, what is your preference there? Is it really then um, going to finer lines than 50 microns? Is, is there a, a real difference? What to use when? Andreas, can you come ah, on? Sorry, back? yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah um, I would say below 50 microns, it's also a really a high um, demand requirement on the on the paste for sure. Yeah. But uh, we we believe uh, or we find out that you, you should choose more an emulsion because uh, the the emulsion is not only coded from the printing side, also from the squeegee side, and it absorbs much more the UV light reflection. You have this in this fine line exposure system, and uh, so you 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 get much better resolution. But you can also combine emulsions and capillary films. It would be okay. also possible. But out from out of our experience, to be below 50 micron resolution, uh, to operate below 50 micron resolution, it's much better to use an emulsion. Okay. Yeah, and so. Um, <clears throat> I think we have a good understanding now what is important. So what do you consider as most important, Andreas? So the, the mesh, of course, is important, but the next with emulsion, where, where are the uh, the limits on, on that? Nowadays, we have very fine meshes available. For example, 380 treats per, per inch and, and 14 micron treat diameter. This is a really nice, fine mesh who is available. Uh, today nowadays, but um, to be honest, it gives also the limit. And it, from our point of view, it ends up uh, at 20 micron. And with yeah. Hans, maybe you also agree with, with 20 micron, it's really a challenge also for the uh, particle size of the in, in, within the pastes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, like I said, yeah, we had then we developed the material for fine line printing, and that's not only due to the material, but also due to to the processing. When uh, screens get finer and 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 emulsions perform better, 
and yeah, then uh, it will be possible also to reduce below that uh, 50 microns. But yeah, that on this moment, I still consider that it's not only 50 micron line width. Uh, you also need to print the 50 line spacing. And initially, I already said, uh, after or during the printing process, the dots need to flow together, and you can never teach them that they remain inside the line. So a line will, in the end, always somewhat wider than what you are printing. That can, of course, also help when you want to print a 50 micron line, and and you have uh, the image with 40 micron lines that you end up uh, close to the 50 microns. So that's a matter of playing around and also to find the most optimum processing parameters for the material. But in the end, when you really go to, to, to really fine structures, yeah, then it could also be necessary to have, uh, let's say, future developments with uh, uh, reduced particle size further and maybe do somewhat with the, the, the viscosity of the materials. Um, also, substrates could be, could be an issue there, and that can all, all such things could be considered. Very important is also the why, why the stencil making, you know, that you have an angle in the, in the mesh stretching, for example. A very common angle is 22.5, but also even 30 degrees could be very helpful uh, that you not have a parallelity in uh, between the, the thread and between the, the edge of the, of the, of the opening. In the yeah, exactly. I, I can totally agree with that. That's uh, uh, yeah, like we always say with screen printing, the most easiest is the printing in uh, in 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 the machine direction, and most difficult is to have the lines which uh, uh, are in the cross direction, which means then parallel with the squeegee. So, and that that's an additional challenge. And there, it also helps that you have uh, uh, the mess not totally parallel to the Squeegee, but there is an angle in it. And to be honest, it's also much more easy to copy a line in space than a lone standing uh, line. Yeah, for example, in solar cells, yeah, if you copy a lone standing line and you have a wide gap between the next line, it's much more difficult to expose this because you have not this absorption of the black, of the many black lines on, on the, the prepress. And that's also uh, good to know. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that, that was also one of my questions, Andreas, because you, you said you managed to uh, achieve 20 microns, but what about the line spacing then? Are you also able then to... Yeah, in this case, it was not a narrow line in space. It was really ah. also a long-standing line. But uh, I also have to agree with Hans. Uh, it needs to be done a pre-press with 25 to achieve by the end. In the, uh, do you have a 25 opening yeah, in the mesh as well or in the stencil as well, but in the print you get only the 20 micron. Yeah. What are required also, so you, you can achieve the, the 20 micron, but you need to do in the pre preparation by stencil making and so on, you need, need to do something. You have to make a kind of linearization. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's it's very good that you already achieved these results, and also with our inks, of course. Um, when we when we start to look at the future, um, I can see fine line inks uh, used for um, for touch screens, HMI, uh, very fine structures are needed, and for sure it will also then, yeah, the demand for finer lines will happen in the future. That's for sure. Uh, we are talking about like. Um, invisible lines for the human eye about 10 microns so that would also be a very nice challenge of course um, when you look at heating elements for example where you need very fine lines which are can be invisible uh, what is what is your what what do we still have to do hans to further develop our inks you think uh, will that go in the direction of fine silvers or is it more the polymer what what do you think where will the yeah well as you already know you are so also familiar with it we have already uh, sub micron silvers with a particle yeah. size of uh, of uh, below three microns uh, in that case it's a uh, sintering ink we have such materials also in that direction you can think uh, about materials for for fine line printing when you go to finer structures in the end you need to do something with the uh, with the particle size of the material and next to that it will also depends on, on the market uh, 
on this moment, yeah, most common is still printing on, on polyester foils. But when you get other substrates in the futures, also the material need to be compatible. When it's a solvent sensitive material, you, maybe you need to do something with with the solvent system of the material. You need to guarantee, guarantee uh, due to the polymer system which you are using, if you have the most optimal adhesion and mechanical performance of the material. So all that things need to come together. And yeah, when you talk about invisible lines, lines below 10 microns, in my opinion on this moment, I consider that as uh, beyond the, the, the possibilities of screen printing. But yeah, you never know for the future. What's your what's your opinion, Andreas, on the on the on the screens, the stencils? Would you I be agree. ready? I agree with Hans. Um, at the moment, we are at 20 micron, and but it's a question of the available meshes in the future. And uh, I know they, they develop new meshes, uh, and it's also a problem to weave such fine meshes. Yeah. <laughs> And um, nowadays, they, they, we talk about uh, 14 uh, micron tree diameter or 13 micron tree diameter, but they work also on, on meshes with nine micron tree diameter. And I believe uh, if, if the, the mesh, the limitation of the mesh will be, avoid, uh, will be solved so far, we can go more down, we can go in the direction of 10 microns in screen printing. But also the paste. Yeah, has to be sure. Yeah, sure. okay with it. But it will be an exciting area indeed. Yes. All right. Well, and um, yeah, I think I already learned a lot. I think for today's applications, uh, I think we're in a pretty good shape together uh, with the ink, with the Henkel ink and the, and the Kiwo stencils. We can, uh, I think, achieve very fine structures already. Um, of course, um, there's still room and depending on the, the customer app applications um, yeah we can we can still develop and uh, see how we can uh, help our customers in that direction so yeah thank you for uh, for watching uh, and i would like to thank hans and andreas for the uh, for the insights on the technology and uh, speaking for henkel of course when uh, when you have any questions on on the ink uh, please feel free to contact us through our dedicated website or through LinkedIn. There's always a, a way to find us. And uh, I think I can say the same for Andreas. Andreas, how to, who to contact best if customers have questions on fine line printing? So in the name of Kivo, thank you very much. Um, we believe that screen printing technology offers advantages for the printed electronics and we will continue and will continue open new application possibilities in the future of this electronic segment. That's that's our main message. Yeah. And it's and it's you to contact it any inquiry. Yes. Hans? I, I agree with that and uh, uh, the printed electronic market will, will grow and, and there is an also room for the fine line printing and it will be an exciting future and it would be good that we can cooperate together. Yes. Right. Well, thanks again. Thanks to the viewers for watching and um, let's start to think together. Thank you. You're welcome.